Okay, first things first, my name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Illuminous 4K Screen Paint using Ambient Light Rejection, Technology Gain Times 4, 4 sorry, 4 and 5, we're going to say 2 and 3, we're going to do that anymore. 4 and 5, and I'm showing you one part, I'm going to show you a very interesting screen. Now, we got one half of the screen painted with Superior, the other one has a screen paint mix. Pretty much any screen paint can be a mix. If you mix black and white or gray and black or whatever it may be, it's a mix. Anything you put together, 2 and 2, is a mix, or 3 and 4, it's a mix. All right, so uh, first things first, let me check. I think I saw I heard my video go off for a minute. Let me see what we got going on here with the phone. All right, there we go, we're good, we're good, we're good. All right, so over here, we're not gonna use the 3700 lumen projectors. We're not gonna use the 26, but we're gonna use that pretty soon. And we're not gonna use the 42, which I have over there. We're gonna use my basic projector. This is my 720p um, 3000 lumen. A BenQ projector is an XGA. Now this projector is sitting back, we're always sitting the back around 12 feet back from the screen. From here to here is always 12 feet and some change. Now what I want to show you in this demonstration, does it make a difference if you have a projector of 11,000 lumens, 1,600 lumens, 1,700 lumens, doesn't make a difference. The bottom line is you will never ever be able to achieve contrast from your screen if you're using a screen paint mix of that caliber or any kind of screen light screen paint of that caliber you're not going to be able to, um, to pick up uh, true contrast and this is the reason why we no longer support light screens anymore and the reason why this is done is because when we develop the superior the superior superior screen paint does something that a lot of black screens can't do it produces a very high white level which gives it the best of both worlds now you have a screen that can produce contrast and white levels at the same time usually when we're developing screen paint we had to develop a black screen paint that was designing you heard me say it a thousand times in my videos the white levels may be a tad or lower but when it comes to the silver screen the white levels are going to be higher that is no more needed because we have a screen that can do both now one of the issues and we I've had it myself issues I've had with dealing with lighter screen paints is the fact that they can't produce contrast now I've done demonstrations with the lights on and like I said, it's rare that I do demonstrations with the dark. But one of the things you have to watch out for when you're watching these demonstrations is that when they do a demonstration and a lot of, and somewhat, some kind of um, ambient light and controlled or lit environment, they will always use bright colors because bright colors will fade less. That's the reason why when I've done a demonstration on the black screen, instead of me concentrated on um, black levels, which I know the screen can automatically do, I concentrated on white levels to show you something opposite of what the screen is not supposed to be able to do. Where if you're dealing with a lighter screen paint, it should be showing you the difference between true contrast can produce contrast or any kind of contrast whatsoever, but it will never ever match a black screen. It's just not going to happen. So if you saw somebody doing a demonstration in a well-lit environment and they're doing nothing but black demonstrations or they're doing something like the star field or just the color black screen saver, you will see the difference on why a black screen will always be more superior over a lighter screen because it can produce contrast. And for those who want to come on and argue and say, well, guess what? It cannot produce white levels. Well, our technology does produce high white levels. That's why it has the name superior. Now, we're going to do this 12 feet back and we're going to have very little lighting in the environment because I'm going to show you why in these demonstrations, why when they use a projector, even at 1600 lumens, that environment, either the projector has to be very close to the screen, if it's going to be used in a, a lit environment, or it's going to have to be using bright, vivid colors because anything with contrast will wash out. All right, so first things first, we got our projector on blank mode. Let's remove this really quick. So we can begin, take it off blank mode. We are going to do it, well, I didn't want you to see that yet. Not yet, I moved the camera really fast because I didn't want you to see that yet. We're gonna take our lights out first. I want it to be dark in here before we bring that over. Now, the reason why you see a lot of demonstrations being done in the dark when they do their demonstrations or display their screen paint mixes is the fact that the image is going to have a much better chance of showing a good picture in the dark. 
because keep in mind, those of you who ask me questions about, hey, look, you know, once you turn the lights out, once you turn the lights out, turn the lights out, turning the lights out is not a hard demonstration because the less light that the projector has to be interfered with, the better the picture quality is going to be to produce. That's easy. Hard part is doing it with the lights on because that means the lumens would have to be interfered with more light in the environment, which would cause you to have less of a lumen count before it actually leaves the projector. Keep in mind, lumens that leave your projector, and if it's traveling a distance before it hits that screen, if you have light in the environment, will start to drop. Much like when a sniper shoots a bullet, he shoots over the person's head because the bullet will start to drop due to wind, gravity, or anything else that may cause the bullet to drop. Now, as you can see, looks great, right? It's acceptable black levels. The minute I come over here and turn my lights on, and this is one light, there you go. Now I don't have to have a lot of lighting in my environment just to show you how fast that screen is going to wash out. This is why when you watch a demonstration they will always use high and bright colors. The brighter the colors, the better chance that screen has a survival rate of being able to show an image in a well-lit environment. They will never do a star field demonstration. It will fail miserably. So this is one light, all right? Now, I'm gonna come over here. We are going to take out the light again. We're going to hit another demonstration. Any light, any form of light. I just have light in one light bulb behind me. And it's back here where the projectors are. And as you can see, see where the light travels right across? Equally above, across both screens at the same time. I don't even have the overhead lighting, which is actually over there. It's not even on. This is what I mean by you will never ever be able to achieve true contrast using any form of light screen. They can't pull it up. This is why I tell you that you will always be in the dark. When it comes to these kinds of screen paints, you will always be sitting in the dark. It's my light flashing. Let's grab this one. Now I've seen this video done a few times in the dark on a lighter mix. Now, trying to get around the other side. And keep in mind, because the lighter the screen, it doesn't make a difference if it's a thousand lumens, it doesn't make a difference if it's 1600 lumens, that screen is gonna show up. Doesn't make a difference, because it's a lighter screen, that's why. That's why when you watch a lot of the um, demonstrations on these knockoff projectors, they're done on white screens, or very, very, very light gray screens, because there's a better chance of the projectors showing up. Now you do that on a dark uh, HD gray screen or a black screen, it won't show. Now, we'll come in and turn on some real lighting. Oops, 
I think that one's unplugged. Yeah, it is unplugged. Oopsie. But I had a light on it there. Let me see where that cord went to. I think I unplugged it. It's right there. It's coming in over here. I've got a lot of cables and wires down here I can see. I'll go back and reset the video. Just trying to figure out exactly where that cord just went to because I know it's plugged in. Yeah, it is plugged in. There we go. I knew that light was plugged in. I'm like, wait a minute. I know that light was plugged in. All right, we'll go back. Sorry about that. I could not find the light. Like, I turned it on, nothing clicked. Like, what the freak? Now, this is all the lights on the environment. And I made sure I put light over here because I didn't want people to say, well, guess what? You just have light on this one side of the screen. It's not fair. I put a spotlight on this side too. So we have light equally throughout the entire area. Wait, wait, wait. I got I gotta tell you, I gotta show you this one. You know, it's funny. I watch demonstrations where I see people pointing into the next room because there'll be light over in here, but it'd be dark here. So this area right here would look like this area right here, and this area right here would look like it's over there. So they'll point over into the next room and say, hey, look, look at all the light I have here. It has nothing to do it. Keep in mind, it has nothing to do with the screen in here. So I thought it'd be kind of funny to point the camera in this direction, like look at that, and then point back over here because all the light's over here. But I thought that'd be kind of funny to put that in there. Now chances are when they're doing a demonstration, they will never, ever, ever have a light that close to the screen. Never, not a floodlight at that. But I thought since I was doing such the small scales that I would do it on a more larger scale to show you exactly what you're getting. Come over here. You can see we have a lot of light in my corner, as you can see, I want to make sure. Because I'll have some people that are coming and go, hey, wait a minute. You just have a light next to the lighter screen, it's not fair. And we'll just go back to our star field. Take out some of the lights here. Take over over here light. Just gives you an idea exactly what you're really getting. All right, so I want to talk about something also too today, really quick. For my time runs out here on my camera. Um, we got a policy on our website we just posted. It's been on the website actually with another version, but this one actually has been strengthened. We put a strong policy on our website. We do not support fake and knockoff projectors. I've said this many times before. I've done video demonstrations on these particular projectors warning you to stay away from them. If you have one, we cannot sell you the screen paint because we know it's not compatible with these projectors. They have fake specifications. Don't go near them. And keep in mind, trust me, I had a, I have a customer, and I'm not going to say his name. I, you know, I feel bad for him. I'm going to help him out with his problem. But um, he bought a projector, quite very expensive projector, and it, it just didn't work with our screen paint. It's not compatible with it. We don't support those projectors. So uh, as I said before, at the end of the day, I have bills just like everybody else that have to pay bills, just like everybody else. But if it means that I have to lose a sale, or I'll help you, I'll try to get a better projector, um, I won't sell you that screen paint because I know it's not going to be compatible. I'm not going to do it just to make an extra buck. Bottom line, if it doesn't work, it's not going to work. But I will help you try to pick out a better projector and hope you can take that one back. Now, just to show you exactly how badly we get hounded by companies um, who want to do business with us, I'm going to show you something really quick. I know you're familiar with that projector, aren't you? 
this is a company that contacted us and they wanted us to basically uh, uh, um, work out a business deal where they wanted us to be involved uh, you know they wanted us to be they wanted to be involved uh, hand in hand with doing um, uh, with doing a, um, a contract with us with uh, projectors projectors and screen paint and uh, we just we turned them down because like I said I'm not about I'm not about uh, doing business with fake projectors I won't I just won't do it and the reason why is because I know that it's not gonna be compatible with their technology I'm not gonna sign my name to something that I know that's going to end up um, uh, it's, it's gonna end up hurting our customers so it's not worth my time okay hold on for a minute sorry just looking through a few things right here yeah so I'm gonna show you this is parts of the email right here so uh, right here we did a discussion you know it's just nothing really much serious but it's just showing you that in the discussion um, you know so that we can uh, join hands to do business so bottom line is they wanted us to uh, they wanted to use a superior uh, technology uh, for their um, for their uh, for their projectors and we turned them down because like I said I don't support fake projectors now I don't go around showing my business mail this way but this is mail that's not nothing not important to us we don't care about it I'm sorry but it's true you know I'm not saying anything bad about the company in any way whatsoever we just don't support your projectors because I asked to have the projector here so we could test one out and they refused so we knew automatically from the door that they were going to probably set it in a comfortable environment and be like controlled environment use the screen paint and just basically try to make the projector I don't know what they're going to do with it but bottom line is we don't support it we don't support it and we never will support fake projectors we just don't so there is a large policy underneath our marketplace when you go to buy please read it also too in the shopping carts please read the policies in the shopping carts it will state that we do not support these projectors also too there's a list of projectors we do support um, doesn't make a difference to make it model just as long as it's name brand so I just don't want to see anybody lose out on a lot of money because I have customers that I talk to from time to time who buy these projectors and they think it's a very good deal and it's not their fault they just think it's a very good deal it's these projectors throw a lot of bells and whistles at you and it makes it sound like you're getting a really good deal when you're just not going to get it at all period you're just not going to get it you know what I mean a lot of people I don't know if that short sh ultra short though projector for five thousand dollars I can't pronounce the name of it but the 7,000 lumen one, that is nowhere near a 7,000 lumen projector. Do you have any idea? I've, a 7,000 lumen projector at 30 feet is incredible. Mind you, a 7,000 lumen in a short throw sitting two inches or maybe a foot away from your screen. At this particular point, you will never need lights in your living room ever again never again that's how powerful 7000 lumens is when I saw the demonstration it wasn't even close now I don't like the same ABS forms because we don't we don't care for them too much but even they went out and did a test on that projector and it came up at 1688 nowhere near uh, uh, nowhere near 7000 lumens that projector right there is 4200 lumens there's no way in the world that projector could come in at 7000 lumens that's virtually impossible it's, it's ultra short throw are you kidding me you ever seen the movie The Poltergeist? Those of you who saw the movie The Poltergeist when the house was imploding and there was light shooting from every crack of the house? Literally, that's what your house would look like outside from the living room. Any cracks you have in your house, you would be able to see it. 7,000 lumens. No, 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 no. Not happening. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video demonstration. Thank you all for your time. You know, not only that, if you were to hit that with a white wall, you would automatically get a washout. Automatically. Oh man, I couldn't imagine what your retinas would probably go through. Everybody would come out there looking like Raiden and doing Stevie Wonder impersonations. Not to say anything bad about Stevie Wonder, but that's pretty much where you'll be going at if you actually get a projector at 7,000 lumens and an ultra short throw. No. All right. Uh, with that being said, hope you enjoyed the video demonstration. I'd like to thank you all for your time. Uh, showing you the difference between our technology and just everyday screen paint mixes. And keep in mind, a mix could be any kinds of paint if you take bare silver screen and you mix it with black paint that is considered to be a mix if you take cake and eggs and flour and salt and vanilla it's a mix anyway so um, just showing you exactly what you are actually really getting when you deal with lighter screen paints and this is the reason why our company long, no longer supports them all right thank you for your time I have to go oh real quick short 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 uh, um, update uh, one of the Panasonic projectors is available on the website uh, matter of fact, 
uh, this one right here. That's me tripping over stuff. Tell me, I'm always tripping over stuff. That one is available on the website. That's the 4000 lumens with uh, lens shift capability. WXGA is available on the website with 140 inch screen and a gallon of superior. Gotta go. God 